Hello everybody and welcome back to Stacia Expert Mode. And in this episode, we set up insane mob farms. Like these things generate thousands of blaze rods in a matter of like minutes. And we also enchant all our gear. So I hope you enjoy. Okay, so today we are going to be doing some enchanting and setting up some mob farms. So I need to upgrade my tools uh, to have at least some fortune sharpness and some more protection on this armor. And you can see I've been through a lot already. My armor is pretty brutalized at the moment. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to make ourselves an enchantment table. Uh, pretty simple. We just need ourselves some books. and I'm actually going to require a lot of books. Uh, I have plenty of sugarcane. Um after been grown, as you can see, I have about plenty of paper here. And all I have to do is just turn all the leather I have, uh, which you can get leather by smelting zombie flesh, which I did not know until recently. So I have 137 flesh right here. I can turn that into um, leather fairly easily just by smelting it. And yes, I did go ahead and make myself an emerald furnace. And I hooked up this system here where coal is getting pumped out into these things getting smelted over here i have this thing down just put whatever i want and that will pump in here to start smelting or go in here and then i process out i've already emptied this chest and yeah we we have so much resources now it's actually kind of ridiculous so we just should be plenty of leather now um so we should be able to make ourselves our enchantment table and now we should be able to make ourselves a ton of bookshelves uh we need 15 to make our thing so this is perfect now the exact center of this room, I'm not entirely sure, uh, because I think I had the two things here. So I'm just going to dig in the wall right here, and I'm going to pl place it in here. And oh yeah, uh, because I'm setting up mob farms later, I was doing a bit of digging, and I made myself a steel tinker's construct hammer. So I'm just going to use this to dig out the wall here. Uh, I just need some planks for the floor now as well. So do I have any... Spruce planks left. I have a few. Okay, that should be plenty. All right, so the bookshelves go in like this. I uh, just want to keep it somewhat even. There we go. And then we can fill in here like this. That looks kind of good. And then we'll just fill, fix the ceiling. There we are. And all we have to do now is put down our, book our enchantment table. And that's it. So this can go right here. Now we just need to get ourselves some lapis. Should have plenty of lapis. And let's start enchanting. I'm kind of hoping to get at least mending on everything. If I have to set up a villager to do mending, I will do that. Ooh, fortune two. Um, Not necessarily good. I'd like to get fortune three. Uh, let's take off our armor and check this out then as well. Nope. Protection tree? That might actually not be bad. Wow, just protection tree? I was hoping for at least some sort of like unbreaking unbreak that's just unbreaking okay and insight what does insight do insight increase experience gained while using an item oh that actually might not be that bad insight and mana regen caviar ender i think ender just allows you to teleport with the thing unbreaking ender disruption i'll get unbreaking uh sharpness forward yes please Efficiency and Soulbound. And Silk Touch. Yeah, why not? All right, I'm going to make myself a Grindstone now because some of these I don't necessarily want. There we go, the Grindstone. So let's say, you know, technically I don't want the Grindstone or the, that. Let's just re-enchant everything. Like, it's not, we didn't get any of like, the best stuff. I'll leave, wait, Experience Harvester 9? What does that do? I'll have to look into that. I don't know what that does. Respiration. That might be a good one too. Protection. Uh, okay, nothing good. Experience boost. Molten tool head. That might be like... um, What's that called? Auto smelting? So that could be something good. Uh, we'll go with the respiration. Uh, protection tree. And then the, these guys protection as well. So the whole armor's pretty much got protection except for the helmet, but that's okay. So the sword, nope. Pickaxe, 
No, it's only got efficiency. Right, I'm going to enchant all these things until I find something that's pretty good. Okay, um... I was going to continue until I got something good, but the pickaxe I just got had silk touch on it. And the crystals that were, or the sea lanterns that were in those things over there, I have visited a few of them and broke the sea lanterns, but I only ever got back the crystals. I thought it would drop the prisma arena as well. Um, so I actually need to silk touch it. And down in the comments, you told me that I could make myself a tinker's construct tool with silk touch on it. Which is what I was doing because I was making the rose gold to do it. But now that I've got silk touch on the pickaxe, I think I should just run around and pick up at least four of these crystals now and then come back and finish it. And then we can make ourselves a remote and we don't have to worry about trying to access our system from inside the house. So I'm going to run to four of these things, collect the crystals. I noticed one right here I didn't break. So I know there's one here. I think there's one buried over there somewhere. But I'm going to go to all these things, collect at least four of them. Yep, there we go. Sea lanterns. And then we'll be able to make our wireless remote storage crafting thing. So I'll be right back. All right, I'm back home and I've got my four sea lanterns now. And I've also picked up a lot of other junk because I found some extra spawners and stuff. And because I have silk touch, I can actually pick them up, which is actually a cool thing, which I might actually do with the spawners I have around the corner there. Uh, but now with this four sea lanterns, if we look up remote, if I this thing would always stay clicked on to JEI, that'll be also handy then as well. So if we have a look here, remote, uh, remote, there we go. So we want the crafting remote, which is going to require another storage network route, which I did actually make all the ingredients for. So there we go. So all we need now is just a basic ender chest, which I should be able to make. I should have everything for this. Vanilla one and... Oh, we're one block of gold short. Okay, so now I should have everything. The crafting remote. So let's see now. I think I just shift right click it on the route that's behind the wall back here. Connect it to network. Um, so this now should be fully connected. And once I can go anywhere and it should work. I'm going to move these down like this. There we go. That's better. When the hell did I get the sudden reach? Oh, I did. I didn't realize I had block reach on my thing. So I can. Oh my god, I reach far. I don't know if that's going to be good or bad, but it might be handy. But now we should be able to access our system anywhere. I don't know if there's a re limit to the distance on this thing, but we're going to try. So let's. Okay, I have to be a little bit closer. I have found. I've gone to the other villages around. So we, I have the village all the way down here. This guy right here. Uh, there actually is a second village appearing down here. And I've gone to this village over here. So I've kind of explored the map a fair bit. And there's also this nice mushroom area down here. But the more and more I explore the world, the, cur the more cur cursed it becomes. Like there is boats, like shipwrecks in the middle of land right here. I don't know what's going on. So, yeah, it's like it's trying, it thinks there's an ocean here, but there's not because of the way the world gen kind of glitched out. So, <laughs> I don't know if the world's going to get more and more corrupt. There is an update for this pack. So, if I update the pack, is it going to get even more corrupted? Let's go to this one, which is the furthest all the way to the, the, to the west, so all the way down here. Let's see, can we access it? We can. Can we access it in the nether? We can. <laughs> Oh my god, this is actually amazing. And you know what? While we're here in the nether, let's get ourselves our cardboard boxes and grab that blaze spawner. And, oh yeah, I was digging to find some netherite. Uh, I didn't mine any, but there is tons of nether um, ancient debris down there. Because uh, I was thinking about using my... Uh, netherite armor, but if we're sticking with emerald, there's no point trying to change it. But anyway, wait, what's this one? I don't... Oh, that's the random waystone I found out in the wilderness. Okay. Uh, yeah, I did find, like, another waystone, like, over here somewhere. But that's whatever. So let's finish enchanting this armor, and we can get back to what we were doing. 
Okay, I have been enchanting for a while, running up and down out of the mines to get more experience because I kept getting experience boost on my pickaxe, which apparently lets you, whenever you mine any stone or any block for that matter, you get a ton of XP. So I went down and started excavating a ton of stone and was getting hundreds of levels. And I went through every single one of those levels until I finally got fortune tree, but my pickaxe is currently broken. Never mind, it has 10 durability. So if I can find some emeralds, I could use that to repair it. But at the moment, yeah, that's not going to happen for a bit. Until we can get mending. So I have one villager in the village still. He's barricaded in a building. If I can get mending off of him, I think we'll be able to use the experience that we're getting from this mob farm to actually generate um, or repair all of our tools. So the first thing we need to do is, of course, make ourselves a mob masher. Now, mob mashers are quite simple to make. They just require a ton of iron swords. And it's going to make a bunch of them because I am going to need some sharpness upgrades then as well. Um, I should be able to make actually these right now. All I need is 10 of them. So they can only hold 10. There's max of 10. So I made 14. All right, perfect. And uh, we just need some looting upgrades, uh, which requires some blue dye. So let's just make myself one stack. And yep, that should be actually plenty. So that in there, make 16 of them. Perfect. So we need ourselves three iron swords per sword. And I think I've already got one extra in there. So I'll just do that and then plus one. Uh, actually, anything I need to plus two. So there we go. So this will make iron spikes. So I'll make two of them. And then we can go ahead and make this. Oh, I need a redstone block. There we are. So here's our mob masher. It's only one of them because we're only going to set up one farm today. And But in between episodes, I'm going to add the extra ones. And I'll show you what I've done now in a minute. But I just want to get everything ready so we can just go straight up there and just build it. So we can unbookmark those. Uh, and we're done with them. So the next thing we want to get is ourselves an ender chest. Uh, I am one blaze rod short. That's actually a bit of an issue. But I'm going to get this cardboard box here. Now, if we look up spawner. We can see from apotheosis, we can add sugar and clocks and fermented spider eyes and gas tears to increase everything. We want to ignore nearby players, which require us to kill a wither, um, which we won't be doing just yet. So I will AFK up there. So everything will just continue to spawn. So what we want to do is we get ourselves a ton of sugar. So sugar, uh, just get out like two stacks of sugar cane. That should do. And we need to sell some clocks, so I think a stack of clocks should be plenty. And if we can, make this fermented spider eye. We don't have any brown mushrooms. Okay, I'll add the fermented spider eye in later on. Uh, I'm just trying to think, where am I going to get mushrooms? Um, is there anywhere on the map that we passed that mushrooms? I know there's the mushroom fungal garden thing down here, but I don't think these actually generate the brown mushrooms that I'm after. So either there's a biome up here somewhere that has brown mushrooms in it, or I'll have to try and find them in the nether. Seems like I might have to go to the nether to find them. That's okay. We won't necessarily need it just yet. So I think we should have nearly everything we have or need. Um, the only other thing we need is probably more black dye. Uh, so I'm going to get my petals here and get some bone meal. I don't actually think I have that much bone meal, but I should have enough just to make a bit of black dye. Grab my pair of shears, and we should be able to make ourselves a ton of black dye, because we're going to need this for vector plates. And the only other thing we need is slime balls, so I think I might have to run over to the slime island in the water right here, and gather all the slime off of it. So, let's just start planting these petals, bone mealing them up, and then shearing it down. So I'm going to do this over and over again, go over there and get that slime stuff, and then we should be able to make our vector plates as soon as I get back. So... I'll be right back once I have all my stuff. All right, I'm back from the slime island and I've got all the stuff I need now. And I just want to show you what I've done here. So um, in between last episode, I did build all the steel mesh fence. And you saw earlier that I did actually move the improved blast furnace over there. But in here now, um, down in the comments, you told me a way on how to sort this oil uh, or the refined oil out. And you are a lifesaver. So thank you for this. So I need to use the immersive engineering fluid pipe, pump it out, and I ran the pipe under, and it comes up in the bottom of this fluid router. I didn't know this thing existed. But what I've done then is the blue 
Uh, no, not blue. I've looked, seen that one there. The white, which is gasoline, is on the top. The white is pumping into here, which is gasoline. And then on the left side here, uh, which is should be green, is lubricant. So lubricant fills in this guy. And then the same yellow, which is this guy, is the diesel, which pumps into here. So it can only go one way. And when these tanks fill, they will automatically then start pumping into these trash cans that I have put down. That way, these will fill, but never clog up the system so that loop, uh, diesel will always be made. And the thing is no longer using more diesel than we are currently producing, so it's kind of at an even point. And I don't mind leaving it just run constantly because we're making more, and this guy is doing well, and we've got so much power stored up, it's so good. So, uh, I'm going to quickly sleep, and then we should be able to head back up top. Because i done it up there where we're going to do all our magic stuff. I've made a different area for our astral sorcery, which is higher up. Uh, but in front of the mob fires, we're going to do blood magic and botania. So I'm going to quickly sleep and we'll go back up there. Right. So if we head up here now, we can see. Well, I'll show you exactly what I've done now. I've also stoned out the entire tunnel the whole way up. So it looks so much better than there's been random stone and limestone. So come all the way up here and here we are. This is what I've done. So we have a total of one, two, three, four, and I am building another one here. So we'll have a total of five giant mob spawners. And then all this area out here is all going to be blood magic. So I'm going to be building out like a wooden platform out here and I'm going to have it on stilts being held up down there. So that would be kind of cool. And then I'm thinking of either digging down and hollowing underneath here to do Botania, or I might pick a different location somewhere else. Like we're doing Botania now next episode. So I need to figure that out soon. I might even do it up on top of that ledge there. We'll see it. I think there's also another spot on the other side of this mountain that looks kind of cool. But we'll, we'll work on that in a minute. So let's dump all of this into the system because we don't need it in our inventory just yet. So we're going to use this mystical black uh, pedals to make some black dye and I want to make sure I hold on to at least half a stack of this there we go and now what I want to do is vector plates so we look up vector uh, if this thing was set to GEI vector plates we have these ones here so this is going to require these blank plates which are the stone and black dye should be able to make a bunch of that and then upgrade these into vector plates and I want to upgrade them to the second one at least then this will be a lot quicker and it'll be able to move everything down. So I'm trying to figure out which ones I want to have what in. So I'm thinking of doing passive mobs in here. So I'm going to change the floor out to the delightful dirt. And then I'm going to do like blazes in here. All mobs in here with dreadful dirt. And then I can do like wither skeletons in here. And then any other mob that we specifically need resources from in here. So let's start with our blaze in here because we're going to be powering our whole system of Botania with blazes. So let's break all these and put down all of our vector plates. This room is a nine by nine. Uh, what I need to grab myself now is a lever. So let's look up lever. Because we're going to be turning on and off. I mean, you know what? Do we have anything to be able to make this link from create? I think I need brass plates, but I haven't made any brass. Okay, we'll just have to do it manually for now, and then eventually I can turn off the thing. So I need this more darkened glass now again. So I think this is the one from Pickle Tweaks. So this one here, it was cheaper. It was just um, glass and some black dye. There we are. And we should be able to build this down. And a good thing about this glass is you can pick it back up. So if you misplace something, it's not the end of the world. And it does become a pitch black in there, which is exactly what we need. So if I come down here to this block right here, this is where I'm going to put the lever to turn on and off the mob masher. So I need to just get out of here for now and just break in the side here. There we are. So the mob masher is going to go right here. We're going to put on our looting and sharpness upgrade. So it kills everything in one hit. And we're going to continue our vector plates up to here and then we're going to turn it so it goes like this there we go and now we can block this up 
Uh, but I actually need to go inside and actually put down the, the mob spawner. So let's do that though. So what we need to do is come in here and find a center, which I think is this block right here. And I need to climb up onto this now. So let's get up here. Uh, what block is that? Marble? Okay. So I specifically made this room fairly tall because I wanted to be able to make sure that it is at least two blocks off the ground. So hopefully now, if I was to break this and shift, that is definitely centered, right? Uh, yes. Shift right click, turns on the blazes. Now put down the vector plate and let's get out of here before they spawn. Oh wow, it actually blocks out all the light. Uh, this is going to be quite loud now as well. But there we go. Tons of blaze rod just from that. Um, and I just realized I never added any of the upgrades onto it. So I'm going to have to do that now as well. Um, but I got myself a jumbo tank, which I'm going to put right... Uh, where do I actually want to put this? I guess I'll just put it right here. And I'll just put myself an absorption hopper on top. And what I'll do is I'll just run cobblestone along the inside just so it doesn't fill up with anything random. Actually, I might as well use dirt. So this guy is going to fill up with dirt and then down the way is going to be fluid. So any XP that's collected will go down into this guy and the rest then will all be pugged into this ender chest. Wait, where did my ender chest go? Did I lose it? Um, somehow my ender chest has disappeared. Oh, I never actually made it because I didn't have the blaze rods. Right. So I'm going to put this here. I'm going to get this advanced item collector. I want to see how good this is. If this guy can collect all the items. Oh, wow. Look at the area he has. I want to decrease the Z axis over this. Oh, wait, that doesn't change it. That just... That just changes the size. Okay. Um, I guess if that's the case, I don't necessarily need it that big then. Because if that collects on the inside there, then it's all fine. All right, perfect. Okay, so that's this blaze farm set up. And now as it collects XP, uh, there's not even a bucket in there yet. I need at least four buckets to be able to make the delightful dirt. And then another four to make the dreadful dirt. So I'm going to add these upgrades onto this play spawner. And then we'll wait until we have enough of the actual um, buckets to be able to make the different dirts. So I'll be right back. All right. So this has been going good so far. Uh, I did hook up another ender chest down to store pump, start pumping into my colossal chest. And just move away from that. It's quite loud. Actually, I don't want to be too far away that it's not activated. Wow, I have to be this close for it to turn on. Okay, but now that we have all this fluid XP buckets, we can go ahead and make our GM evil feed. Wait, what are we out of? We don't have any bones. Okay, at least we can make one. So, use this, and then we can do the same thing if we look up at mob. We can make ourselves a nutritious chicken feed, and this will get us either a... Rotten or a golden egg. Now, we need to find ourselves some chickens. That's the hard part. Now, I do remember seeing some chickens off over that way towards the slime island, so I'm going to head there. Right, here we are with the chickens. So, right-click you. Come here, you. Get, get back here. Okay, I'll do you. Happy birthday, <laughs> And there's that lovely music again. So now we got ourselves a golden egg and a rotten egg. So let's head back home and set them up. I have all this set up now. So all I have to do is just break this centerpiece right here. Okay. Get my golden egg. Right click it. It'll turn all the dirt into this delightful dirt. Now, I don't think it'll spawn in here unless there is light. So if I look at like maybe glowstone. Maybe if I can put some glowstone in the walls that might help them spawn. Uh, hopefully, I, I hope this doesn't have to be like some sort of brightness level in here that to make them spawn. If it is, then it's fine. So I'll put a glowstone in the wall right here, here, and here. And hopefully this should be enough light to get it spawning. If not, then there's something else that I'm missing. 
that's causing him not to spawn. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right, so I've gotten it to this point now. So this thing has got max upgrades and it's ready to be turned on. I just fill that block in right there. And now I have to be able to try and get out of here fast. And actually, before I spawn these guys in, let me put down this ender inhibitor uh, right about here. So this will stop endermen from being able to teleport out of here. So at least that way we'll be able to have some sort of protection against them. So I'm actually going to turn this thing on because I know the second I step in here, mobs are going to start flying and I need to be able to put down the vector plate back the right way. So here we go. I'm going to right click this block right here, turns into dreadful dirt and you can see mobs are already flying through. Uh, I just need to be able to put down this vector plate. There we go. And now I have to try and squeeze out of here. God damn it. The slime hit me and it bounced me up and flew me into the mob masher. Damn it. <laughs> okay, well, at least I'm out of it now, but that I didn't want to die. Well, at least I can break this now and just fill back in this hole here. Oh my god, these slimes are really annoying. They push you hard. But there we go. Uh, I should probably get some more torches up here and light everything up properly again. All right, let's just empty my inventory of everything and let's get all the item collectors and set it up right here. All right, I think that's it. So all that's now hooked up and it all gets sucked up into the ender chest, pumped down into the system. And yeah, so we've got a lot of XP now being generated in these guys right now. Um, so I think before next episode now, I'm going to go get the villager that I have locked down in my basement. Not my basement, in one of the houses I have. I don't know why I said basement, but he's down one of the houses. I think he's in this one right there. I think that's dirt in the front of that house right there, and I think he's in there. So I'm going to make him elect a librarian and see if I can get myself a mending book. That way I can start repairing all of my armor and tools. So yeah, I'm going to end it there. Hope you all enjoyed. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new. Hope to see you on the next episode. So without further ado... Goodbye.